Have you ever really looked at a creek, stream, or river? I mean really looked up close, down at the bottom. This guy does that for a living. Meet Dr. Arches Grubb, an aquatic invertebrate biologist. Invertebrates are really great indicators of water quality because the water quality is going down, those are the first ones to disappear from the water. His name is Dr. Grubb, and this bug dude studies the health of Texas rivers by checking in on the tiny invertebrates that live here. Beautiful. I don't know if I'm for Let me find catching for you. <laughs> There's a damselfly larva, oh, it's super small. Oh, this one's a caterfly, green one. <laughs> I primarily focus on the invertebrates, little small critters. You get the black and yellow on it, love it. Just beautiful creatures underwater. You might think of some alien creatures, pretty much right on the head. This is the Blanco River, and it's Dr. Grubb's latest study site. It's very important because I'm studying and finding out what all the diversity of these invertebrates are. And so I am capturing a snapshot here and recording what all we find. I'm only getting 0.98 CFS. We are measuring water quality now which includes temperature, conductivity, which is the salinity of the water, um, how much oxygen's in the water. I really like this site. It just has a lot of different components to it. So it's got big pools where a lot of the water's flowing up and the water's deeper. Then it's got riffles that are shallow with a lot of cobble and a lot of stones. Bugs like a lot of things to hold on to, so a lot of debris and vegetation. Um, they really love that kind of stuff. So this is just a great site for that. There we go. You're gonna find tons of these bugs. Most of them are uh, the nymph stage or the larval stage. See those case builders right here? Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of them here. Oh, wow, look at this. There's a stone fly. Yes. Ooh. Look at that. That's the biggest hellgrimite for today. Oh my gosh. You see it? Very cool. These two are here because of the floods of 2015. Good evening from Central Texas, the scene of utter devastation, a natural disaster of epic proportions. These flood levels were really huge. Uh, it was a 500 year flood event. Regular discharge on the Blanco River is about 90 CFS, which is cubic feet per second and it peaked around 150,000 CFS. Um, it came out of its banks, all the vegetation, took down giant 100-year cypress trees. A lot of debris came through the system and scrubbed the substrate clean. The floods wiped out almost 90% of the aquatic invertebrates. Ooh, yeah. So for the next several months, these two will check six different sites along the Blanco River. We collect three samples, just dump all whatever we have. There's gonna be tons of insects packed in it. So now that flows are back down to where they're normal level, uh, we wanna see how the bug population is reestablishing itself. Which ones were most affected and uh, how they're doing now? While the invertebrates make their way back to the lab, Dr. Grubb gets a break at the house. Hey, Bucky, how y'all doing? Sort of. This is Tibbles. He's Pearl's rat. It's a bit hectic on the home front. I really like the bears because they have like a really beautiful color. He has a little heart on his back, if you can see. I haven't named this tiger Barb yet. And then he runs, he runs over here. <laughs> it's kind of like the Wild Kingdom here, with plenty of fish. 
This is a 250 gallon tank. These are some Roseline sharks. These are from India. Uh, then we got some uh, clown loaches over here. These are from Indonesia. My husband lives, breathes, dreams, fish. Yeah, this is my planted aquarium. It's a 65 gallon tank. I got the whole thing set up natural with live plants. When we got married and lived together is when I noticed he was starting to do all these setups in our little itty bitty apartment. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I didn't know that it'd last, and eventually the little 10 gallons were would evolve to eight footers, and I'm just like, okay, this is a little extreme. <laughs> they say never take your work home with you. So I really like the blue in this cardinal tetras light up really nicely. But for arches, it seems like the opposite is true. Yeah, I mean, you gotta do what you love, right? So it's good. See how it goes. Really enjoying this every day when I come home from work. I just sit here, chill out, take a break instead of turning on the TV. I just enjoy watching this. This is one of the hardest parts. So these are some of the bugs we just collected from the Blanco River. This part typically takes quite a lot of time because uh, you have to look through the bugs, different parts of their bodies, uh, legs, the claws, the mouth parts, to figure out which one they are and go through the ski, which shows you what you're looking at. This is a case builder. So these guys, they build their cases with twigs and sand particles. As they get larger, they abandon the old shell and build another case. Yeah, look at that, dude. He's attacking my forceps. <laughs> the helgramites, you'll find them only in clean water systems. They're an indicator of good water quality. Now I'm here on the microscope spending hours, days. And finally enter all the data, and after that upload it on the computer, and that's where the fun begins. Like, you know, that's the stuff I really enjoy. It took well over a year to sample and analyze the aquatic invertebrates of the Blanco. All of this information from all these species goes into one dot. So you take all these samples, so all these dots run different matrices. Then math magic happens, and what looks like flying shapes is some serious science. And uh, finally you condense all the data, and this is what you get, the product. You know, we are able to see the trends. Arch's data showed that indeed, for several weeks after the flood, aquatic invertebrate numbers were way down. Yeah, the numbers were like almost nil. But his data crunching revealed that as time went by, the aquatic invertebrates returned. The numbers come back and stabilize at a certain level at each of those sites. The whole habitat is destroyed. The flood just takes off 90% of their population and still they're able to come back and just go to stable conditions like it was before. That's just amazing. Oh, look at this. For arches. That's the damsel play. Now he gets a chance to show off his life's passion to his kids. We go out to the river, we're swimming and all. Hey, yeah, look at that. Right now, when they're flipping those rocks, they're seeing these creatures come out live. It's just amazing. Oh, that's a Megaloptera. Guys, look, look. Actually out experiencing it. He's awesome. That's the 100% goal is for them to be hands-on and touching. I mean, they are genuinely interested in bugs. It's great. It's great. Man, I never knew water paintings could move. They're so cool. So whether it's taking the kids to see them up close. It's a riffle beetle. You see that black thingy moving? Or scoping them out in the lab. Look at that. Riffle beetle larva. Ooh, he just turned in, nice. <laughs> it's easy to see Dr. Grubb's love for aquatic yep. invertebrates is pure. These organisms that we find in the water systems are really essential. We do not want sterile waters or polluted waters. That's not good for the fish, the bugs, or us humans. <laughs> but what I want to do is I want to be able to leave these organisms in the river systems for my kids and their kids. We want to be able to leave the habitats in pristine conditions. Ooh, look at that. You know, not to be affected 
or impacted to the point where these critters are going to be knocked out of the system. So I want to do whatever I can to make a difference. This project was funded in part by a grant from the Sport Fish Restoration Program.